Good morning, friends. It's Kate from Venison for dinner. If you enjoy watching our channel, you should give it a little to the video and subscribe. This tells YouTube that we're a channel worth watching. Hey, Rowan, that's enough. Thanks. So if you enjoy us and you would like to help us succeed, this is one of like the best ways you can do it. Like it? Subscribe? Hey, Freya. Just a second here. So after we drove home from fishing, Mac and Hamish and I needed to turn around and run back to go to town and go to the eye doctor. And we grabbed our favorite food truck, which we try to get a couple times a year. Oh yes, the boys got sunglasses. I needed sunglass because my eyes were getting dilated. Super classy. Anyhow, our favorite food truck, really delicious, not really expensive. They're only open from May long weekend to Labor Day weekend. No. And we tried to go a couple times. So I got their special, which was this Mexican platter. So it's like this rice, uh, pork with mole. Just a second round, pico de gallo, refried beans, corn and bean salad and a tortilla. Girls got chicken strips and fries. Matt got fish and chips. Hamish got a burger. Hamish is eating some chicken strips and fries. Mary's also wanted chicken strips and fries. He normally gets a burger, which is kind of funny. But he just went to go uh, get rid of the scraps from filleting the salmon. And then he's gonna come back and eat. It's okay, Cash, you'll be nice. Look, other doggies, Cash. You gotta learn to be respectful, though. You're gonna get bitten. No. Didn't you call him Johnny Cash for short? Well, no, his, his, he is named after Johnny Cash because he's wearing a suit. Oh, hi. That's Johnny Cash. Oh! Which that? We had to change his name as well. So a couple videos ago, I showed this pink salmon that was no good. And I was like, we're not sure we're going to do with it because the pigs, we don't have pigs right now. Only chickens. And so many people were like, feed it to the chickens. So, dogs um, attracting predators. Marius was just not into it. The chickens can't clean it up fast enough. They take longer to, we used to feed chicken to chickens before we lived somewhere with like bears and such. Marius just not, does not want to bait them in. Um, that's also why we can't put it in the garden. We would just be baiting bears into our garden or inviting the dogs to dig in our garden. So there you go. We have like a compost pile basically, like far away from the house. So if anything, um, what is she hollering about? If anything gets attracted, it's not anywhere near our house. I ordered some sewing supplies. Um, they're so expensive in town, like at least $20 a meter for basic cotton flannel. So I ordered online from a company still in my province, but uh, way more affordable. So let me show you what I got. Okay, so I got some thread and I didn't have one of these things. And my mom always had one of these my whole childhood. I needed more pins too and some hand sewing needles. So. Hand sewing needles always seem to disappear in my house. Okay. Freya's birthday is in six weeks or less. My plan is to make her a quilt, just like a big block quilt. Um and do a thrift store wool blanket that I have quite a few of as the batting. So this is gonna be the front and this is the back. I feel less confident about my color and design choices now that they've arrived. Um, this is fabric I got to make myself a hinterland um, so liberated dress, flannel, ones I have linen of, but I'm gonna make a flannel one. Maybe this is the problem with buying fabric online because this definitely looked less orange 
and more black and red online. This was also to make a dress, maybe. I'm not sure how I feel about this fabric. Let's see, how does it look next to my complexion? So awful. I don't know. I'm not convinced. The other day, one of Marius's friends asked if he could come over and look at his butcher shop that he was building because he needs some carpenter's experience. While he was there, a lightning storm started and they got in the back of his Sprint, which is like an El Camino, and they went and sat in a hayfield and watched it for hours and hours it went on. And it's one of those once in a lifetime kind of experiences. Oh, baby. <laughs> Damn, I would not want to be standing beside that one. But look at the amount of drugs some people can do and survive. It's not unrealistic to think that you can get hit by lightning and live. Yeah. You need to get some awesome scars. <laughs> yeah, imagine the scars and the stories you could tell. So, I sent off three samples. Two blood, one milk. I had one bad result and two good results. The good news or the bad news first? Good news number one is that Miss Star, who is Jess's first calf, is pregnant with milking shorthorn AI. And she's due in March, I think. Hey, you get out of there. What are you doing? Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Yeah. Second good news is that Clover, we tested her for BLV, which is bovine leukemia virus. Um, we were starting to suspect she had it. One of the things being because she has swollen lymph nodes and a weak immune. But she was negative, so there's a nice surprise. We definitely expected her to be positive. And the third one, which is bad news, but we're gonna retest is that Jess's milk culture came back with a really bad one, um, Klebsilia. However, Klebsilia is very environmental and could be the milk sample was not clean enough. So before we go forth with a bunch of treatment, we are going to retest because it's a very small case. Like I can make cheese, I can culture the milk. Nothing's going bad when I do anything. It's just still in the milk filter. There's a little couple little things every day. So first thing I did, oh, I just checked it. So the vet told me there's this mastitis vaccine um, against the four major mastitis bacteria called Topvac. So um, if she does in fact have Klebsilia, her chances of getting rid of it are very slim. So that really sucks. Um, anyhow, because it's gonna take like at least a week before we do get another milk sample, um, and this top back, one now, one in a month. And he said that's our best bet if she has Klebsiella. Klebsiella? I don't know. However, I am also treating her with homeopathy. There's homeopathic vets. Um, so she's getting four different remedies that are all for, that all match her symptoms, especially for chronic things. So we have phytolacca, pepper sulf, silica, and sulfur. So, um, actually giving them to her was harder than I thought. Like, I didn't think it was going to be hard. But I ended up, you shouldn't mix it with food. Like, for humans, but like... I, you can't, it, I didn't know how I was going to do with the cow. So I gave a tiny bit of grain and put a few pellets of each one in there. And I'm going to give it to her twice a day for like three or four days and see what happens. Um, but yeah, I was going to just put them in her mouth, but I like put one in her mouth and she's like, hmm, that didn't work. Anyhow, let's get the cows out of here. And I'm actually going to deep clean the milking machine today and make cheese. This old pig pen was majorly demolished. So we just, by the goats, the goats demolished this on purpose. 
Um, so we just opened up a new space for them. Although, is this drilled here? Hmm. I don't know why I let them out up here. Let's go let them out this way. Come out this gate then, goats. We just electric fenced in. You can see orange line. So it goes from this corner of the pig pen up along that driveway and meets up at the gate over there. So, come through this way, goaty goats. Come on, goats. Come on out. It's nice over here. I know, I probably need to lead you out through here. Oh yes, this is gonna keep them busy for a long time. We have haying equipment up there. Oh, that's a burn pile. And the haying equipment is all surrounded by thistles and the goats are really good at annihilating thistles. So Marius wanted them all in around here so that they could eat around the haying equipment. Now I need to get out of here without touching this. Let's see. Ooh. This is strong enough for the goats. It's not. Basically our hope is that they're just so busy in there eating things, they don't try to get out. Wishful thinking, I know. I'm sure by the end of this YouTube video, they'll be out. One plug-in electric fence charger, but Marius wanted us to have a solar one for more flexibility. So this is what we got, Patriot. And, uh, She's all hooked up and ready to go. Mrs. Fish is out of the brine and rinsed and it's early morning and dark in here, but he wanted to get a smoker going first thing. So I got it going for him and he'll get the smoker fired up in a little bit. Kids are picking peas. I was checking if there's any green beans ready. We picked some yellow beans up from the house. We'll get itchy finger. Um, the lettuce I planted is not coming up just yet. Oh, they're eating peas too, they say. Hamish looks like he's eating the carrot too. Picked cauliflower and Romanesco that needed to be picked ASAP. Lots of baby green beans coming on. Pretty quick, we're going to be doing lots of green beans. Oh. There is some huge heads of cauliflower in here. There's my size nine foot for reference. There, there, there's one over there. I'm just leaving them, one over there. Cabbages are all doing good. None are splitting, so I'm just leaving them. After that rain we had, I was thinking we could maybe get some splits, but they're not splitting, so we're leaving them. Eating things that need to be ate and picked and dealt with. So these are baby cabbages. We'll see what they do. Oh, I gotta pick that broccoli. Oh, that one too. <laughs> and these are all side shoots off ones we picked and those need to be picked as well. So. I maybe didn't bring a big enough basket. I'm loving how the purple cabbages are just nice tight heads. Those ones are beautiful size two. Again, size nine foot for reference. So this is an outfit I got on, woohoo. Okay, well I gotta check this row if there's any green beans. And lots of peas to pick, that's for sure. And to show you too. There was a tiny bit of damage from the frost. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Doing some vacuum sealing of cheese. This is an Asiago made from Holstein milk. When we had a Holstein, no lights please. Um, briefly last March, April. So that was a huge wheel of Asiago and I did up half of it. The other half is just gonna get done up as is. Let's see, yeah, there's a lot here. So this is a stirred curd cheddar. There's three of them, they're all three months old, roughly. Um, it's a little dry, that's to do with the acidity, but it's good, like dry cheddar's not a bad thing at all. So, so that one. This is a black pepper cheddar. Um, I don't think it needs more black pepper, however it, the black pepper doesn't really shine through, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that ages. Um, this here is the third stirred curd cheddar and it is it got too warm in its aging process, so that's all the little holes. Um, they are just like the culture's got a second wind, so it's kind of like Swiss. Perfectly safe and delicious. Um, this, I cut up the whole thing. This is a cheddar that's over a year old, but it was over dry, so I overcooked it or something. 
So it's not amazing. So we're going to call this a cooking cheese. So I did all it up. It's just the texture's still a bit rubbery and it's over a year old. So that's not going to improve. What do you think of it? Not bad. Try this one. This is a cheddar too. Boys. Excuse me. Watch your mouth. Um, here's the Asiago. You want to try it? Just try a little bit of that one. That's good. What's this one? Um, this is the cheddar. It's a little dry. Yeah, you don't need to eat the whole thing. Where's the black pepper cheddar? Oh, I don't think there's any. Um, yeah, that's black pepper cheddar. You want to try it? Well, she has spoken. Well, this rascally trio... Come on, Jessa, it's milk time. Yeah. You beefers, you get out of here. Oh, and you're eating the goat's grain. It's the same grain as theirs, not a big deal. It's just, get out of there, cow. Chaos. This is called milk roulette. Roulette, however you say that. When you're not quite sure it's gonna fit in this bucket. Got a bit more milk. I'm not quite a bedding woman. I don't want to take a chance. Oh, I think I can fit it. I think I can fit it. Will I win? Will I win? Will I win? Just barely. I was like, why is that last bit of milk not straining? Hmm. The strainer was sitting in the milk. Four and a half gallons. So that's a one gallon jar and this is three and a half gallons when it's filled to the top. Four and a half for us. A gallon for the calf. Mm -hmm. And they don't stick on the trays with us because all we've smoked on them is pork lately and they're all greased up, so I wanted to... A show. There's a show. Where are we, Rowan? At, at the office. Oh, yeah. At the eye doctor. At the eye doctor. And so... I'm just, Mom, I'm hungry. We can bring the treat in. You gotta have a good eye doctor, then you can have chocolate. And Nala has white on her paws. And Kate, Nala, Rowan, Rowan, Rowan I, get away. The kids are too. Uh, Why Nala again? That's so cute. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Stop, Rowan, don't do that. Stop. <laughs> Stop rolling! The kids. I'm on breakfast duty this morning. I got some scrambled eggs all prepped. <laughs> Trying to thaw some back bacon, which is what Americans call Canadian yeah. bacon. Yeah. There you go. Back bacon is made from the loin, so instead of having a loin or chops, you have back bacon. We love it. Um, blanching some broccoli. More broccoli, prepping broccoli. I already did two gallon bags of peas. That's Romanesco. So when I um, chop it for blanching, can you move out of the way for a second, Ron? I just do, 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 go along until it looks small enough. Yes, I was gonna save this one for eating. You would like some broccoli? Mom, we save the one. There you go. Did someone lose some teeth? Two front teeth. All I want for Christmas in. is my two growing. front teeth. This one's got growing in different reasons. These are the first teeth Freya lost, and she lost two in one go. Anyhow, it is ooh, 8.25, kind of late start this morning. Yeah. Not really. We've done all sorts of things. We just haven't ate breakfast yet. We don't eat breakfast first thing. We get going on some other chores. In winter, we eat breakfast first because it's dark, and then we do other stuff. In summer, we get going on chores, and then we pause and have breakfast. But I'm in my office at 9 today. Got a lot to do because my last office day, we went fishing. <laughs> Yesterday, we butchered chickens, and I don't think I took a single video. I took a few pictures. I'll pop those in for you.
Um, we had a good day. We got 30 chickens and 10 quail done. And um, we'll do another round in a month or two once some more get bigger. We need like 50 to 60 chickens for ourselves for the year. Ended up with two gallons of broccoli and two gallons of peas. Oh yes, you're so hungry. They're getting it. They're getting it. I also have a bucket of milk because apparently the fridge was full. So I need to deal with that. But breakfast first.